Sleep is a cornerstone of health. I know you know this, but what you might not realize is there is sleep and there is sleep. At a very basic level, there are two kinds of sleep, REM and non-REM sleep. Every night you flit through these different types of sleep. The REM is a reference to what your eyes are doing. It stands for rapid eye movement. In REM sleep, your eyes are bolting around like crazy, while in non-REM sleep, your eyes take a break. Actually, it doesn't look quite as freaky because your eyelids are closed. During REM sleep, the body is largely disconnected from the brain, so this effectively leaves the body paralyzed. But your brain is definitely not paralyzed. In fact, your brain activity is pretty close to that of what, what it would be if you were awake. Other notable thing about REM sleep is this is the stage most associated with dreaming. Now, when we worry about not getting enough sleep, for the most part, no one really worries about whether you are REMing or non-REMing. Sleep is the objective, but it shouldn't be. REM sleep is special. It, like many things, is what makes us human if we compare how much REM sleep we experience with our relatives. It's clear humans are REM sleepers. In fact, anthropologists think changes in sleeping patterns and arrangement made us human. Current research suggests REM sleep is particularly important for immune function, for memory consolidation, and for mood regulation. And it is the key to transpersonal religious and spiritual experiences, which are really the things that make us human. Which brings us back to the current state of affairs. Stats suggest modern humans are sleep deprived. We're often too busy or too distracted to sleep. Now, anyone who is sleep deprived is dream deprived but you can still be dream deprived even if you're sleeping join us for this episode of better body chemistry tv as we consider the fate of the dream deprived better body chemistry tv is brought to you by dr sandy a scientist turned gremlin buster helping you battle sugar gremlins heffalumps and other health horribles through better body chemistry remember small things can make a big difference to your health. As I mentioned earlier, a night sleep is a cycle. Now, you do cycle through REM and non-REM throughout the night, but the brain prioritizes the non-REM sleep, so early in the night, the duration of REM sleep is shorter. As the night progresses and the non-REM quota has been taken care of, then the length of the REM sleep gets longer and longer. So the sleep late in the night, it maximizes its levels. If you're burning the candle at both ends, you're shrinking REM sleep to a greater degree than non-REM sleep. So get enough sleep, but watch how you do it. Ironically, many of the sleep aids that the sleepless reach for change the REM-non-REM balance. Alcohol. And cannabis both help you fall asleep faster, but they end up suppressing REM sleep. The problem is not confined to the so-called more natural sleep aids. Sleeping pills do exactly the same thing. They increase the level of light sleep at the expense of deep sleep. Aish. Other meds? can compromise REM sleep too. The list of problem meds is a long one, but two classes of meds warrant a special mention. Anticholinergic drugs are widely prescribed for a variety of conditions, including COPD, overactive bladder, GIT disturbances, etc. To produce all their benefits, they oppose the cholinergic system. That is, they decrease the levels of acetylcholine. Unfortunately, acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter that makes REM sleep happen. So one of the side effects of taking this family of drugs is the dream movie theater has trouble operating. Now, acetylcholine runs the show by inhibiting adrenergic and serotonergic activity. 
antidepressants help lift depression by bumping up the levels of serotonin and norepinephrine. So when someone is taking an antidepressant, these guys responsible for running non-REM sleep have a distinct advantage. And this plays out with less dream movie showings during the night. It's actually considered to be a good thing because dreaming can often be messy. So the absence of dreams is a benefit of the therapy. Maybe, maybe not. Dreams are the language of God. They are an innate, natural process. So you want them. Getting your dreams back depends on identifying and eliminating the factors that are inhibiting their natural flow. Start by optimizing your sleep as much as possible. And go easy on those sleep aids. Now, if you are struggling to sleep, it's more often than not a body chemistry issue. Work at correcting this with some ideas and strategies that might help. Follow the video link and respect your dreams. In bygone times, dreams were revered. They were discussed, shared, and remembered. When appropriate, they were acted upon. We live in a culture that, for the most part, dismisses dreams as the ramblings of neurophysiology or a party trick to interpret using a dream dictionary. They're more than that. They're contributing to your neurological health, creating better body chemistry and better brain chemistry. Interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry or need a little help getting your body chemistry on track, visit our website at www.betterbodychemistry.com. Browse our library or enroll in one of our courses or programs. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone who's struggling to cope emotionally? Maybe they've lost their dreams. Share this video with them so they know where to look to find them. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.